Um, okay, so um, find the direction and the magnitude of the force. All right, um, but we still haven't figured out the magnitude of the force. That's something we should try to work out on paper. That's a, a pretty very typical type of question. So how would we go about figuring out the magnitude of the force on the electron here? Let's try working that out on paper. Any idea about what we have to do first here? Um, well, we have to find the magnetic field first. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, because the force comes from the magnetic field. So let's try working that out on paper. Good, because here we have, as they said, long straight wires. And last time at the end of the session, we came up with this formula for figuring out the magnetic field from long straight wires. You saw that we're treating these wires as source currents. So we want to use the left part of the, uh, of the flow chart here. So this would be the basic formula we would use. OK, good. Um, so, and then, so in terms of distance from the wire? Right. Uh, what if they weren't e equidistant apart? Like, how do we know which wire to choose to say right. its distance to? Well, let, let's start with the, the information that they gave us, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then we can make the problem harder if we can get that. So first of all, how would you deal with the information that you were given? How, what would you plug in this format? Right. OK, good. So. What symbol should I plug in for the source current? Um, I guess I1, let's say. Right, although we want to use the symbols that they were giving us in the problem. So what symbol did they use for I1? Um, just I? Yeah, just I. That might seem kind of trivial, but we want to use the same symbols that they're using in the problem. And then what symbol should we use for R? Well, you'd already mentioned that we should put in a D for R. OK, uh, so then what? For B over here? Um, we're going to plug in that B that we just calculated right there. This one right here? Yeah. Okay, that turns out to be a little bit wrong, so let's go back and think about that. Okay. So the, before we can use this, we have to figure out the magnetic field where the electron is. Mm -hmm. But remember, there's one magnetic field coming from wire one, yeah. and there's another magnetic field coming from wire two. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to figure out the net magnetic field from the two wires together. What we've done so far is we figured out the magnetic field from wire one. Uh, and I should say what direction this is in. So I, we already figured out earlier that this would be into the, board, into the board. And is there any reason that's the, that's the magnetic field from wire one except that we just decided it was? Yeah, I just decided it would be convenient to think about wire one first. Okay. But now I need to go on and think about wire two. Well, what symbol should I plug in for the source current for wire two? Yeah, because they decide they I they told us that these both had a current of I. And what symbol should I plug in for R for wire two? Because they told us this distance was the same. And this we already figured out that this is also pointing into the board. Okay. Now we have to figure out the net magnetic field. Uh, so uh, how would we calculate? So let's work that out on paper. What would the net magne magnetic field be? It's just the little I pi over D. Yeah, so we would add these two things together. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are both the same. Well, let's think about that. Uh, so we have uh, mu I, I over 2 pi D plus mu 0 I over 2 pi D, which is 2 mu 0 i over 2 pi d. So we have the net magnetic field mu 0 i over pi d. Now, in order to add these, uh, in order to figure out the net magnetic field, how did I know that both of these should have the same sign? 
Well, because they were both in the same direction. If these had been in opposite directions, we would have to um, have one with a positive sign and one with a negative sign. But fortunately, here we saw that they were both in the same direction. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying to figure out, though, whether these are in the positive z direction or the negative z direction, because it's kind of confusing to, to mash up this picture with this picture over here. It doesn't really matter. All that really matters is that we know these are in the same direction, so they're not going to cancel each other out. So that's going to give us this uh, net magnetic field. All right, and this is the number that we have to plug into over here. All right, so again, last time, we only did problems with one wire at a time, and we didn't talk about what to do with two wires. Well, with two wires, you figure out the magnetic fields separately, and then you separately figure out the net magnetic field. Uh, that shouldn't be too surprising because we've done very similar things with, say, electric field, where we figured out the individual electric fields and then added them up. Um, so that's what we would have to do um, in this case. You'd asked earlier, what would you have done if these distances were not equal? Um, well, no, it makes more sense. Yeah. I th the problem was you probably were not thinking about how you would have to think about the two wires separately to start with. If they had said this was D1 and this was D2, you would just put those symbols in down here for the distances, and then you would just get a more complicated expression because these two things wouldn't combine. But they made our life easier by using the same distance for both. Okay. So if you have more than one source current, you have to first analyze each source current individually and then add them together to net, get the net field. All right, and now we're ready to so plug into our equation. A moving charge doesn't have force, right? Like a moving charge isn't a, exactly a force. On anything? Um, it certainly could. It, it could be exerting a force on something else. Move me, uh, having a charge move doesn't prevent it from exerting a force on something. Well, what are we treating this electric, this electron as? Are we treating it like a source charge or a test charge? A test charge. Because they asked us, what's the force on this electron? Uh, so okay. we're not. So it's possible that this electron could also be exerting a force on the wires. I see. But that's not what the question. Yeah. Okay. Did they specify that? Yeah. yeah. They want the force on the electron. It's certainly possible that this electron could also be exerting forces on the wires. Mm -hmm. um, or at least in some situations it might be. But that's not what the question was asking us about. Of course, the electron is so small and insignificant that any forces it would exert on these would be insignificant too. Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, the force that's exerted by a moving charge is a little bit beyond the scope of your course. Um, but in any case, um, we always want to be clear about, are we focusing on the field coming from a charge, or are we focusing on the force on a charge? Well, in this case, we're just focusing on the force on this. So we're not even going to wonder whether this could exert forces on other things. Uh, but it certainly is theoretically possible for moving charges to exert forces. We're just not analyzing that here. Okay, so plugging in, um, what should I plug in for Q0? Good. For yeah, they didn't actually use that symbol in the problem, but we're expected to know that the standard st symbol for a charge on an electron is E. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good that you didn't say negative E, because we're just trying to figure out the magnitude here. So we'll just put in this, the symbol E um, for the charge. This stands for the magnitude. I myself maybe I would put a dot here to specify that this is just the magnitude of the charge. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, I won't put that in here. All right, now how about what should we plug in for V perpendicular? because we've already decided that the entire vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And what should we plug in for B? Um, for B, we plug in mu naught i pi d. Over pi d. OK, that's that net field that we figured out here. Not, we don't want to plug in the individual fields. All right, so um, what is the answer to question B? magnitude and the direction is the negative y direction. If you wanted to be really spiffy and elegant, you could pack those all into one thing. This gives both the magnitude and the direction. Uh, but actually, uh, maybe this is more confusing than it's worth. Maybe it's better to state the magnitude and the direction separately. Okay. All right, so the big thing that we, uh, that we learned from this is that when there's more than one source current, 
you have to figure out the fields individually and then combine them to get the net field. 